Hi, Jeff Geisinger here, and welcome to the eighth tutorial in our Diva 4.0 tutorial series. Today we'll set up a basic energy model using ArcSim, and we'll go over the essential grasshopper components that we'll need to run a monthly heating and cooling load analysis for a single thermal zone. In Rhino, we have a single zone modeled here. We have a zone that is 10 meters by 14 meters by 4 meters high on the zone layer, and we have a window modeled coincident with the south wall here on the window layer. It's important to note that for ArcSim, the Rhino positive Y axis is north for an energy simulation. So to begin, we will create a thermal zone using the thermal zone component in the ArcSim components tab. Now this thermal zone component will transfer the Rhino geometry that we input into a format that's legible for the underlying simulation en engine for ArcSim, which is called Energy Plus. So we'll place a BREP container on the canvas and assign the zone geometry to that BREP. To create a simple zone from Rhino geometry, it's important for the Rhino zone to be an enclosed volume. And so that's what we have here for the single zone. So I'll go ahead and plug that into the BREP input. Now we can provide an optional name for our zone. I'll go ahead and call it example zone. This will tag the specific zone for our output results. And for the settings, I'll use the settings button here. And this is where we can configure the different internal loads, conditioning settings, and materials for our thermal zone. For people, I'll, I'll go ahead and change this to 0.1 uh, people per meter squared. That's about 10 meters squared per person or 100 square feet per person. And I'll change the occupancy schedule to occupancy office. This means how often are these people actually in the space. And the, the office occupancy is uh, there's no one really there at night um, or, or in early morning. And then in the morning, there is an increased occupancy and f uh, higher occupancy during the day and then tapering off in, in the late afternoon and no one there again at night. So for the equipment, I'll also use the equipment occupancy schedule for an office the equipment schedule, excuse me, for an office, and I'll leave the default watts per meter squared value for the internal gains. Uh, equipment gains is 12. And then for the lighting, I'll also leave the default lighting power density watts per meter squared, and I'll leave the other defaults as well, but I'll change the schedule to lights office. Now for the conditioning tab, I want to make sure that I have heating and cooling turned on, and they are checked because the objective of the simulation is to run a monthly heating and cooling load simulation. For the schedule, I'll, I'll also leave the defaults all on, meaning that the heating system and cooling system will be on. So whenever the interior temperature is below the heating set point of 20 or above the cooling set point of 26, the simulation will calculate the loads necessary to, to obtain that comfort temperature. And I'll go ahead and leave the defaults checked off for the other settings here in conditioning. Now under ventilation, I'll leave off the scheduled and natural ventilation, but I will check on the infiltration. This means how leaky our thermal zone is or how airtight our zone is. And I'll change the infiltration to um, 0.2, which is relatively airtight, but not super tight. I'll leave the domestic hot water turned off, and in constructions, I'll set some, some constructions for the different surfaces in our thermal zone. So for the roof, I'll go ahead and place this insulation and concrete material. We don't have to worry about partitions and slabs because we have only a single zone. If we had multiple zones, the, the demising wall between two zones would be a partition, and if we had two zones stacked on one another, the floor that separates them would be a slab. But since we only have one zone, we can leave these out. Now for the ground floor, I'll go ahead and select a concrete material, but I'll check adiabatic. For this simple exercise, I don't want to really consider any kind of heat exchange with the ground, but at the same time, I, I don't want to consider the ground um, as touching the air. So if um, if I want to just kind of take that out of the equation, I'll, I'll make sure there's no heat transfer. I'll, I just check adiabatic. Now for facade, I'll go ahead and select the same material, um, the 120 millimeter insulation and 200 millimeters of concrete. We can define custom materials and build them up using the library editor or using custom grasshopper components, and we'll get into, the, into that in um, future tutorials. Next, we'll set up a window for our simulation, and we'll use the window component here in the ArcSim components tab. 
And to assign this window to the window settings component, I'll need to provide a BREP input. And I'll go ahead and right click this and say set one BREP. And I'll select this window right here and input that into the BREP input. It is important to note that for it to properly be recognized by the energy simulation engine, they should be co a coplanar with the walls that host them. And the directionality of the surface normals or the vector that's perpendicular to the, to the window surface should be pointing outward. And I could check this by typing in DIR in Rhino and selecting the window. And we see that the vectors are in fact pointing outward. So that's good. I'll turn the preview off on these services for now. Now that we've input the window geometry into the window settings component, I can click on the settings button to open up the window settings dialog box to configure our window for the simulation. I'll leave it as external window and I'll place, uh, I'll select double pane clear for the glazing construction. And we can also construct custom glazings using the grasshopper components, which I'll, which I'll get into for um, future tutorials. Go ahead and leave window frame and shading system off for this very basic tutorial and I'll, I'll ignore the ventilation settings because we don't have ventilation selected in our conditioning. I'll press OK. Now we can combine the, win the thermal zone and the windows together to characterize our, um, our overall energy model using the zone connectivity network component here in the ArcSim tab. This will combine our components of our thermal model to prepare for an energy simulation. So I'll go ahead and plug in the zone output to the zone input and the window output into the window input. Here we can also provide a boundary condition if we wanted to provide a ground object or an adiabatic surface along any of these particular building surfaces, but I'll leave that out for now. And likewise for shade, we can provide a shade surface geometry above our window, or even if we want to consider context buildings across from our um, thermal model, we can input those BREPs into the shade input. We can also customize our library and use this library input, um, but I'll leave this out. Um, I'll, I'll leave these inputs blank for now. Next, before I actually run the thermal simulation, I will place a service analysis component. This is a good habit to check to make sure that the geometry that we've set up here from Rhino and assigned in the Grasshopper components are being properly sent to Energy Plus in terms of uh, the roof being properly considered a roof, the walls, the exterior facades being facades and so forth. So I'll plug the model output into this model input. You see that the, the service analysis component will tag our thermal zone with the name that we provided, example zone. And if I now place a BREP component onto the canvas, I can plug in the different components of the service analysis, um, the different outputs of the service analysis component into this BREP to see how ArcSim is treating our geometry. So by plugging the facade output into this BREP container, we can see that the preview geometry is the four walls that are surrounding um, our thermal zone. They're bounding the walls of our thermal zone, and that's correct. So we, we know that all of these surfaces are facing the exterior. If we had two zones next to each other, we would expect for the, the demising wall to not be an exterior facade, but rather be a partition. But since we only have one zone, we don't have any partition elements. And the same with ceiling. We don't have two zones stacked on one another, so we don't have any ceilings being previewed. However, we, we do have a roof, so I could plug the roof output into this BREP, and we can see that the top of our thermal zone is properly being considered as a roof. Same with the external floor and with the window. And this is pretty straightforward with a, a simple shoebox geometry that we are modeling today. But with, with more complex geometries and with multi-zone models, it's always a good idea to check the geometry using the surface analysis just to make sure that facades are, are actually considered facades. Um, partitions are properly assigned and not considered as services facing the exterior. Roofs are considered roofs and so forth. So this is always like a good check. Now I'll go ahead and place the Run Energy Plus component onto the canvas. So this component will send our thermal zone geometry, our zone connectivity network model, to the Energy Plus simulation engine. So I'll plug in the model output to the model input. We'll have to give our simulation a name, so I will place a panel on the canvas and call it Example. 
And we also have to specify a directory where ArcSim will save our input and output files. By default, it's the desktop, but I'll go ahead and create a new folder on my C drive. I'll call it C backslash ArcSim results backslash example. Next, we can specify the climate file that we want to use for our simulation. So we can pull down this drop down parameter menu and you see that there is a series of default weather files. We'll go ahead and use the default Boston Logan Airport um, for our simulation. And I will place a button on the canvas to run the simulation. But before I do run the simulation, I will click on the Energy Plus component settings to make sure that we have the right run period and we have the right resolution and output selected. By default, the run period is the entire year and that's what we want for this simulation from January 1st to December 31st. We want to do a monthly simulation, although we can change this resolution to hourly if we wanted to look more closely at the specific results for, for each hour, or if we want to just look at an entire year. But I'll go ahead and keep it at monthly. Now there's a list of output var variables that we can select. To make things simple, I'll just deselect all of them, and I'll scroll down the list to the zone ideal loads. And for this simulation, I just want to look at the zone ideal loads total heating energy and the zone ideal loads total cooling energy so that we can see the heating and cooling loads for our single zone. And I'll press OK after we're done. All right, when we're ready to run the simulation, I'll go ahead and press the button. So when the simulation is complete, we can go to our directory where we have saved our, our input and results file. So it's in the C drive arcs and results, and then it's created a folder called example. I double click on that, we see that we have a series of files. And the one that we are interested in for the results is the CSV file, the example.csv file. Now we can read these results using the Grasshopper components. So we can do that by placing the load result file onto the canvas and then inputting the model, um, the model output into the model input of this component. We also need to provide a toggle to set it to true. So I'll place a Boolean toggle onto the canvas to initiate the results reading. And then by clicking on the outputs button, you see that we have, we have the option to select multiple zones um, for these results, but since we just did one single zone, um, called example zone, we, we need to check that. That's the only option we have. And we have the options for the different output variables. And I'll go ahead and click on both of them, heating and cooling energy, and press OK. Now we can place a panel on the canvas and view the results in the form of a grasshopper tree. So you see that we have a tree with two branches. Each branch is a list of monthly values for the heating load and for the cooling load. Now we can work with these values further in, in the Grasshopper canvas. Um, also, we can look at these results directly in the CSV file, and um, we can open up the, C the CSV file to access the data directly in a, a CSV reader like Microsoft Excel. And you can see that here the results come up as three columns. We have a column for the date and time, and we have the months of the year. And then we have one column for the total heating energy in joules. And we have one column for the total cooling energy in, in joules as well. And so these are the ideal loads. They're not um, converted for, um, energy, for energy use in terms of coefficients of performance or anything like that. These are really just the ideal heating and cooling loads to maintain the set point temperatures within our thermal zone. And we can select all this data. And in the Excel graphing tools, we can create a quick line graph of our data to visualize the um, difference between the heating and cooling loads along the course of the year. Great, that wraps things up. We set up a, a simple thermal model for heating and cooling loads using a basic shoebox geometry in Rhino. And um, I hope you'll join us for our next tutorial. Thank you.